A warm welcome to Johannesburg, everybody. We're at the Liberty Life Wanderers for what promises to be a fantastic finish to a beautifully scripted Standard Bank ODI series between South Africa and Australia. Graham will toss the coin. Heads is the call. Is it head? Heads it is. Ricky? We're, we're going to have a bat this morning. The wicket looks, wicket looks pr pr particularly good. It might be a little, bit, uh, a little bit tacky early on, a little bit slow early on, but if we get through the new ball, then we should be able to put a good total on the board. Probably would have batted first if you'd won the top? No, actually, we, we probably would have gone a different way. Again, uh, I think it would probably start a bit slow this morning and hopefully get better as the day goes on. It's a difficult ground to defend on. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can bowl well up front and, uh, and really restrict them. Well, the players are on their way out to the middle. 270, 280 was spoken about, barriers at total. What do you reckon? I think it should be more. I think 300 is, a, is, is what somebody would feel very comfortable with. There's the Australian side. Unchanged. And uh, it's an unchanged side. And I think they'll be looking for a, a good start here. And I think, you know, obviously Gilchrist in the first 15 and Hussey in the last 15 is going to be two key areas that South Africa have got to target. So two all it is. We're at the Liberty Life Wanderers. There's a look at the South African team. And the man you need to look at there is Johan van der Vaart. He comes in because Sean Pollock is injured. They have to get up with Pollock not being there. And of course Adam Gilchrist who looks like he's in pretty good nick at the moment without nailing a big one. He's a fine player, we know that. And he's a big match player also. 1400s in 239 games, an average of 36. Best of 172. And that strike rate is just remarkable. 96.2. He is obviously one of the big danger men for South Africa. And they love playing at the Wanderers, the Australians. They've won four games out of six here. The memories are very sweet for them. The last time they arrived here, they played in the one-day international game, that is. They won the World Cup in 2003. And his partner is Simon Kadic. Another left-hander. There's a whole host of left-handers around the place for Australia. Just playing his 38th game now. Average of 35 and a half. Best of 170. He's got the 100. And a strike rate, a more sedate strike rate of 70. By the way, the average strike rates for the top order international players in one day games is around about 73 74. So he's uh, pretty much on the mark. And of course, you get the odd player who is far superior. South Africa without Sean Pollock. That's a major blow. So it's McCain Tini who's going to be starting proceedings from the call at drive end, 28 years of age. And he'll be uh, extremely keen to get stuck into the Australians. 129 games. Best of six for 22, not that long ago, of course, in Cape Town. At a pretty tidy economy rate, and uh, in the series, the economy rate just a little bit higher than what uh, we've seen so far from him. But he's a wicket taker, we know that. Alongside me, Pat Simcox. Good morning, Pat. Morning, Michael. Uh, good to be here, and uh, good morning to all the viewers, may, wherever you may be in the world. The scene is set, and just get the feeling from the people in the ground that this was the 2003 World Cup that they wanted. They wanted South Africa to play Australia. It didn't happen. They've got it now. This is the final. Mackay and Tini, first ball. And it's a good one first up. There'll be some good carry here at the Wanderers. I mentioned the track is an absolute beauty. He's away. And he's timed that superbly. Well, he just said value for shot. You get it here at the Wanderers. It fairly flies off. Gilchrist will feel much more settled. Mackayantini had to pitch one up a little bit more. Just to see if there was any swing. And if there was any movement off the track further up. That's away. That's his zone. Loves it on the offside. And he drives well through extra cover. Oh, goodness me. That was brilliant stuff by Herschel Gibbs two runs the results so that's good running from the Australians he was airborne couldn't grab it cleanly well it was a chance those often stick played in the air and anything going in the air South Africans will look to take but uh, a half a chance albeit a tough one and just maybe this day the final swings on those half chances that's over the top. A couple of bounces for. It's a big over for Australia. Just a bit short for McCain Tini. Rounds off to 10 from the over. 23 for none. Straight drive for four. Beautifully played. Right along the dirt track. They don't come better than that. He's in the drive zone and he jumped all over it. 
Andrew Hall getting it up there. The ball will get a little bit older now. The lacquer will come off. It won't swing as much. So you've got to get it up there just a little bit fuller and ask it to swing. But look at that. No running. Once he did it, just stood dead still. Straight again. Four again. Well, you can clearly see it's a good batting track. Ball comes on nicely. Good for driving. Some thought it might be just a little bit slow in the beginning, and it may have been. Shout from Hall, Boucher, and also Smith at first left. But not the affirmative from the umpire. 32 for none. That is through, and that is four. It is the shorter boundary by, I reckon, around about 25 yards. Well, something's bothering him. I think it's the bat. He's not happy with it, but <laughs> my goodness. Why would you change it? Straying leg side and another boundary. McCain is a little bit all over the show right now. And you can't do that to a player of uh, the calibre of Adam Gilchrist. All again. That's away on the leg side. Shorter boundary again, and that's another boundary. So three boundaries in the last four balls. Oh, that's a good shot. He's hit that uh, very hard indeed. I don't think it was through the hands of the short extra cover. It went all the way along the ground, I reckon. That's the uh, 50 partnership. Short delivery again and uh, pulled away. This is a fast outfield. It's four more. Well, the Australians couldn't have dreamed about a better start. They've managed to get a few boundaries away, despite the fact that early on they got uh, they were nailed to the crease a bit. This wasn't a flyer like first or second over flyer. This has been building. Well, straight down the ground, and uh, that one will go for four as well. Uh, sixth boundary off from Tini. It's 65 for none. Oh boy, a little flirt at that one. There's another example of the uh, the little bit of luck that the Australians have had today. It was outside off stump and uh, it was a very ordinary shot. Batsman both having a look at a spot on the pitch. It moved, that's for sure. I don't know whether there was a bit of cut on the ball, a little bit of work. Yes, there was. A little bit of work on the ball. Maybe worthwhile trying someone who does that uh, on a more regular basis. Oh, he's hit that in the air through the offside field. Bounces away down towards the boundary. If he's going to bowl those cutters to Gilchrist, I would suggest he needs a sweeper back. He may just get him caught out there somewhere. And there we go again. The sweeper would have cut that one off, and uh, that also is going for four. And that's the wrong one. Outside uh, that off stunt, that's not the place to bowl. It's like he overpitched. And uh, hasn't Gilchrist got stuck into it? You don't have to miss by much, do you? That's right. Oh, and he's hit that magnificently. That's gone way up into the crowd. Well, Katic has been bogged down just a little bit. Gilchrist has been doing the attacking, but uh, he doesn't often settle for that. And this is an example, a superb cricket shot. In the commentary box now, Mike Hazeman. And uh, alongside him, Daryl Cullen. Outstanding shot, just outside the line of off stump. The bigger boundary there, and obviously looking at uh, the bowling of Johan van der Butt so far, the first couple of overs. Good. Goodness me! That is absolutely remarkable. Andrew Hall has taken a blinder. He looked in no position whatsoever, stuck the hand down. The ball went straight in, and that is a huge wicket. Wow, what a catch! Great catch by Andrew Hall. He almost stuck it out as if to say, well, I've got to get something down on it. And it's stuck. And it's a crucial period of play here for South Africa. Just when Gilchrist was looking to launch, Andrew Hall pulls out this bit of brilliance. Well, we've said all along, a couple of us have said that fielding may just be the deciding factor between these two sides. And you need work like that if you're going to stay in this match. 97 now, the end of Gilchrist for 55. Australia have lost their first wicket, which brings Ricky Ponting, the captain, to the crease, playing in his 250th game in one international cricket for Australia. Only two ahead of him. 
Alan Border 273 and Steve War 325. Slightly leg side and there's no protection down there. So they finished that over in style. Ricky Ponting, I think, had another word or two as well in the middle off camera. Just to put his point across. 114 for one. That's away. That's where Ponting wants them. And that's gone for four. He will not miss out in that region. Well, he hadn't quite finished what he was saying and the ball was on him and now it's gone for four. Don't want to put himself in a situation just playing into Ponting's hands out. That might just get him going. Get his adrenaline flying. Can work against him. I think he's too good a player just to fall for that sort of stuff. Bit of turn. And it's beaten him. Nicely played by uh, Ricky Ponting. Using the pace, just going with the turn. Unlucky. Got out like that in Durban. This time he's had a bit of luck. Oh! And he's flipped that one over the top to again a leg side boundary. One short, one up. Doesn't matter to Ricky Ponting. More runs. Four. Short boundary. He hasn't had much of a strike since Ponting came in. Uh, Simon Kadic. There's the attempted quicker one, and uh, Ponting won't miss out on that. Far too short. Oh, and that was premeditated. Smashed away. Simon Kadic has decided that uh, blocking's not the order of the day. They want to get as many as they can down the wicket. You don't often see that to uh, Jacques Collis. Well, that shows what a good deck it is, and he's got confidence to go down. Wait, wait! Whoops, there's a mix-up here, if he hits. Oh! And, wow, they'll be very disappointed there. You can see that. Every right to hold his line, but the run-out was possible. Gone for the vote, try to get back to try and stay at the stumps. He may have hurt himself, but... Good fielding, ever away, Kershaw Gibbs. Now, had he caught the ball, and there had it been a good direct throw, he'd been gone. Come a long way down in front of it, trying to get into position. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, he's gambled. I think he's picked that slower ball from Jacques Callas, and he's gone after the short boundary, and it's 20 rows back. That's where you can't bowl. That's three of them. All in the same area, all to the same type of delivery. That's much better. This is a bit more luck involved in this one. He's spliced it over, but it's still gone for four. It's such a short boundary. That's unlucky for the bowler. And that one, he's hit in the air. And again, picked out the gap. He's on a mission, Ricky Ponting, on a big mission. And that's to beat Graham Smith into submission. Well, that's down the ground. It's going to go all the way. Don't worry about trying to catch that one. Kadic is in the air. This is good. This is out. Yes, caught a third man. Actually, pretty well played by Kadic. He obviously intended to get it down to third man. He hit it right off the middle of the bat. And it's gone straight to Telemachus. You might have thought for a moment that he was looking to get it a bit finer. Played it too well in the end. The extra pace and bounce from Makai and Tini. Who can this give South Africa a chance to somehow subdue these Australian batsmen? A well played innings from Kadic. Australia now 216 for two. Oh, Ponting is having a go, and that's gone through the field as well. Boy, this is lightning. This outfield is unbelievable. Another one. Well, Ponting definitely has decided that almost everything's got to go. Nice four, and it's got through the field. And there's another very good time of the ball down the other end in uh, Hussey. He's only just arrived at the crease, and uh, he really only lent on that one. 
Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Well, he has a batsman who's only just arrived at the crease, and you, you just wonder where he's been. Why hasn't he been playing one day internationals and test cricket? Bang! Goodness me, that is huge. That has gone out of the ground. Maybe on the lunch table in that block of flats. Callis again. Advancing. Callis saw him coming, and that is a great shot. That is a very good shot indeed. Saw him coming, dropped it short, he backed away, gave himself width and slapped it for four. Down the track this time and into the crowd. That is a great shot from Mike Hussey. How do you stop this freight train? 34s, seven sixes. Amazing. Got a strike rate in his uh, one international career of the high 90s. He's now going at very close to 150, Hussey. 29, 28 rather, off 19 balls. Short this time, and again it's been dispatched easily for four. Lovely control from Hussey. Once one. Shot from Mark Boucher. Ricky Ponting has got three figures that has not been referred. Magnificent stuff from Ricky Ponting. Absolutely outstanding. What a remarkable player. That's his 20th 100. His teammates love that. Adam Gilchrist on his feet and applauding. Everyone else there as well. It's been a treat. Short and wide and gets the treatment. Runs all over the place. Advancing. And four more. Goodness me, that's a boundary off the first ball, the over. Loves driving through that region, three extra cover, and he's got himself four. He rarely misses out, and that sort of opportunity, Mike Hussey. Just eases it through, doesn't he? Three hundred up now. Three hundred for two. Australia. And there's still 10 overs and one ball to go. Now that's uh, gone away for four. It's been given run, so there must have been uh, a bit of willow there, top edge, which is a little bit dangerous for Mark Boucher. You're not kidding, that's a wicket keeper killer. 50 for Hussey. In no time at all, 33 deliveries. Seven fours, one six. Cries of catch it, but no one there. He wants two, he's going to get two more than two. Picks the gap so beautifully, Michael Hussey. That's why he's going it along at such a rate. 100 they've put on in 66 deliveries. Six. Callas thought he was in the game at one stage, not to be. He would have been if he'd been 20 rows back. No catch by the spectators. And just another six. The eighth in this innings. 63 now for Mike Hussey off just 38 balls. Eight fours and two sixes. And the full toss was just dispatched. There'll be a few that reckon... Uh... Oh, there we go again. I mean, they really are picking the gaps beautifully. What a position to be in, though. Ponting on 117. Hussey, 68 or 41 deliveries. Oh, he's hit that one, and that's gonna, it's gone as flat as attack for six. Well, Ricky Ponting is uh, certainly enjoying himself out there. I mean... Two down they were in this series. Uh, this is a different looking side totally. Lots of intensity from Ricky Ponting, even though he's in a wonderful position. Just since he's he's looking at bigger things here. Oh, that's six. That's straight. That's going straight over the top of the side screen. Oh! That's a great box down there, but they were they were scattering all over the place. The best box in the house, straight down over the top of the standard bank sign at the far end. And Ricky Ponting has hit the ball straight into it. 
That is a heck of a shot. It's a big beat. Yeah, well, he was in danger as well up there. What a shot. Well, he's heaved that one down the ground. Now, let's just see if we can pick this ball coming down over the top of the screen. Here it comes. And uh, there they go. Boy, what a wicket this is. Oh, that's six as well. He's worked that away on the onside. It's a question of getting underneath the ball. Anything you can get underneath, the way these guys are playing is going to disappear into the crowd. Some catches taken in the crowd, I tell you. Andrew Simon's fist up. He enjoys it. But it's been a while. And a lot has been spoken about bowling at the death. And you've got to hit the right area. You've got to get it full up. Oh, not like that. That's six as well. That's gone way over the top of mid-on. Now, that's an example of exactly what you don't want to do. I mean, that's the length that says, take it. So much power. It's the length you spoke about. It's happy hour. It's been happy hour for a little while now. Here's a full toss, and uh, it's in the air. This will be out court. Yes, at last. Hussey trying to hit a full toss down the ground. You heard Pat Simcock saying, you're better off over-pitching than under-pitching. Hussey didn't quite get that one in the middle of the bat. Uh, it's gone down the ground, and Mackay and Tini's taken the catch. Nice and easy from Mackay. Fifty-one balls. Just have a look at that. Eighty-one runs at a strike rate of 158. Well, you've got to go a long way to beat that. 374 for three now. And uh, the man striding out of the centre now is uh, probably the hardest striker of a cricket ball in world cricket. Well, they're, they're probably one or two around him. Kemp, I think, is another that uh, when he, on his days hits it just as hard. Uh, perhaps Andrew Flintoff. Well, it's a full toss. It's going over the top. Will it go the whole way? Yes, it is. All the way. That's the direction he loves. Uh, he really does heave them in that, uh, in that, into that corner, does Ponting. Well, he's now reached his 150. 154 to Ponting of 99 deliveries. And there goes uh, yet another six. Right, so Ponting on 155. Flays that one through the offside again. No ball called as well. Oh, there you go, another no ball. Well, Simons is not going to waste any time, so a no ball four. In fact, this over so far, two no ball fours. Oh, that's it. Take that. Another no ball. And it's gone all the way as well. Well, this is turning out to be this over is turning out to be a nightmare for him. Not only is it a no ball, he's in it for six as well. And uh, the highest team total in one day international cricket. It's the first time any side has got to 400. This is the sort of thing this Australian team will enjoy. It's wonderful betting. Oh, and that one's disappeared as well. Another four. That's 22, 22 of this over, and only three balls, three legitimate balls have been bowled. Oh, he's hit that way over the top as well, and he's got him, no, he's got him! That's a great catch! That's a wonderful catch by Dipinar. Well, this is as good a catch as you see in circumstances like this. He had the rope right at his heels. It was as flat as a tack. The ball would have gone at least five meters over the boundary. And uh, it has been brilliantly caught and brings to the end what is one of the most brilliant knocks ever seen here, I feel certain. But Adipano had to judge it well. He stay just inside the rope. But Ricky Ponting leaves the stadium. The Wanderers' bullring have played an in innings. 
that will be remembered by everyone here for many a year. A standing ovation. Well played, Ricky Ponning. 407 for four. Well, that's an inside edge along the ground for four. Well, when it goes wrong, it really goes wrong. I suppose the question here, Pat, is um, is, is it worth considering a change to the South African batting lineup? One handed is another no ball. And this is getting out of hand. It's gone for four as well. Last ball of the innings. Brett Lee has smashed it away down towards square leg. Kemp uh, hovers down there, but then pauses. In comes his throw. And that is the end of the innings. A wonderful batting performance by the Australians. Of that, there is no doubt a world record batting performance. And uh, from a South African bowling point of view, they'll be very, very pleased it's over. There is the uh, performance of Australia. A wonderful performance. Ponting, the top scorer, won 164 of 105 balls. And um, well, who would have thought that we would have had a world record score made at the Wanderers here today?